are the shrieking sounds of your rowdy children playing cops and robbers. At breakfast, you reached into the icebox and noticed that the ice had almost all melted. You spread what was left of the butter on a thick slab of bread and washed it down with a cup of black coffee that took 20 minutes to percolate. While you ate, you thought about the long day ahead. Your toothpaste wasn't a paste at all. Instead, it was a powder that you sprinkled over your toothbrush whose bristles were trimmed boar whiskers. You put on something that looked a lot like this and of course grabbed your hat then walked out into the chilly morning to work. From the window of a passing cab, you heard the ink spots singing maybe. But cabs were an extravagance you rarely enjoyed, so you walked the eight blocks to the Gristidi Brothers Market. By 8.15, you were wearing your apron and greeting customers from the neighborhood while stacking 144 cans of beans into a pyramid. For lunch, 25 cents got you a sliced ham and egg sandwich and a cup of black coffee at the counter of a luncheonette, where you read an article in The Sun about a new recipe for a delicious chopped beef casserole and chatted with the waitress about whether Gone with the Wind really deserved to win eight Oscars. You made $7.69 a week, sent five back home to mom, and added one more to the college fund for your three incredibly noisy kids, Fred, Marjorie, and Gigi. You hadn't seen a Charlie Chaplin movie since you were a teenager, but he was making a huge comeback in The Great Dictator. So you went home and changed your clothes while your husband, Dale, called the sitter. And by 7.30, you were both laughing harder than you'd laughed all day, as Chaplin brilliantly mocked Hitler. For dinner, you went to Ruben's restaurant for an extravagant $2 steak, after which you politely refused Dale's advances. So you went to sleep and dreamt of Hitler and Chaplin and Beans and Dale.